a quick disclaimer. So I just want to say that I had a goal this year, um, well, the start of the year, that I was going to read um, 25 pages of a book, depending on like how the length of the book is. But 25 pages of a book per day. And that was pretty much my entire goal. Since the beginning of the year, I've not fulfilled that just yet. But I will be starting it uh, starting this weekend. I will be trying my best to read 25 chapters uh, of a book every single day. And you might ask yourself, why did he find that important to tell us? Well, if you're reading the header, uh, the header of this video, then of course you come to the conclusion that yes, I'm converting to Islam. Now, there's a long story about that, but before we begin, I just want to say hello. My name is Ant West, or AK on this page, Ant West Fitness BB, where we focus on a lot of different things regarding not just fitness, bodybuilding, but as well as finances, mental health, and as well as just my personal life. And the thing is, when it comes to um, this whole segment of why I'm doing this video is because this ties into my personal life. This ties into my personal beliefs. And I feel like when it comes to you as a person, people are always going to find a way to place what you believe in on you as if that is the uh, end all be all. And when I say that, it typically just all I'm just trying to say is that People conflate you being a human being and what you practice and believe to the actual belief itself. Now, some people can say, well, you're a Christian. Do you understand what that means? Do you understand the history behind that? Do you understand the belief behind that? I do. Um, and let me just go ahead and say that I got all this pretty much covered as far as my explanation of my life and backstory when it comes to me converting to Islam. Now, I understand that Islam is a very didactic thing when it comes to livelihood, when it comes to, you know, pretty much understanding why things are the way they are. It could be subjective to some people, but for me, I don't think that's the case. Now, the reason why I say that is because I have a lot of different things that kind of led me to this. Maybe it's because it's just coincidence, because I've known people and listened to music and all these other things that led me to this, which I'm going to explain later. But I think the biggest thing is like, there's one, there's a couple of, there's one story in particular that's going to pretty much like be the sum of why I decided to do this versus why I am, uh, why I decided to convert and versus why I decided not to remain Christian. So let me just start from the beginning. So when I was a young kid, you know, I'm saying I was very kind. I was very, I loved knowledge. I love the, the aspect of knowledge as far as like understanding why things the way they are, understanding what the framework of things are. I was always a kid that questioned a lot of things. And as a kid, you know, as you are, as a kid, when you're questioning so many things, there's so many people that kind of give you what a lot of Muslims or a lot of other people that converted to Islam say about Christian preachers and pastors, about how, like, you shouldn't ask too many questions. And I've always been given that kind of answer as a kid. I was always given that answer as a young adult, and it never satisfied me because I felt like if I'm going to decide something, it has to resonate with me. And when I say reson uh, resonate with me, I really mean it in every sense of the term. And that's the thing. But we're going to get into that. So obviously, as I said, as a kid, I'm always questioning things. I'm always wondering, like, why things are the way they are. And I always felt special as a kid. When I was born, I felt like I was just meant to do great things. I was felt as if I was con more connected as a kid to my creator than I am now. And that's natural. I think like, you know, over time, as we grow and develop, we have all these different perceptions and ideas and beliefs of certain things due to our experience and our knowledge that it kind of clouds the thoughts of, you know, the one true God. I guess you can conflate that or you can not conflate. You can uh, compare that. Uh, to the story of Adam and Eve. And in my personal opinion, I believed in that story because 
the simple fact that man decided to take a bite of the forbidden fruit of knowledge makes sense because ignorance in a sense is bliss. Now, I'm sorry if I'm having a little bit of a, um, uh, a lisp because I've been, I was drinking lemonade and now my tongue's puffy. So I'm drinking some water, but that's what always made sense to me. I get it. Cause over time when we want more knowledge, the more we kind of forget the simple things and we forget the things that don't really matter is actually what do matter. Um, if that makes any sense. And to continue with the story, as I've gotten older, once again, question life, question myself, question things. I question so many things, especially, you know, God. But at the same time, I never really, I believed that he existed. I felt in my heart that there was something other than us. And I don't think it was aliens. I don't think it was any kind of um, majestic creatures per se, but I do believe there was something else. And when I was a kid, when I ever tried to like think deeply and thought about like God and I was, you know, people ask a simple question, well, if there's a God, then God must have to have to die. Like he has to have, if he created life, that means he must be life himself. And so, which means that he has to die at some point. And when you try to think about if God, God can die or if God was, you know, sent here from someone, I promise you, when I was a kid, I used to really, I would have moments where I think about this as a kid and my brain would literally hurt. Like, I mean, like, I felt like my head, my mind was crushing itself trying to figure out what the answer to that is. And I believe that that was a sign. Like, we have limitations on our thinking and our ways of uh, life. So uh, that's one sign as to why I believe in Islam. Another example is when I got older, around the, when I was graduating high school, there was a time where I personally was just super depressed from like 2012 to all the way about 2015, like early 2015. And the thing, the reason why I was depressed is because, well, not so much in 2014, but I'll explain that in a bit, but the reason why I was depressed is because when I got to the end of high school, I got came to the conclusion that the fun part of life is kind of over. Um, as far as like me not having to be serious, me not having to take things seriously. And granted, some people might look at that and be like, are you kidding me? Like we grow up, man, it's life and you're right. But I don't know, something inside me just didn't like that feeling of thinking that that this is the end of the kiddish games. So as time progressed, I went through a period in my life where I personally um, was just trying to seek knowledge as far as like understanding, you know, a lot of things. I was looking into music more. I used to be a big lover in R&B and listen to nothing else. Um, but I started exploring rap. I started exploring uh, uh, rock and roll. I explored a lot of different things as far as like, you know, lifestyle. And there was one thing that I also started to look into, which I'm going to explain starting now in this next section. So one thing I started to explore was Tupac, um, as far as, you know, the music stuff goes. And something that when it came to Tupac, there was a lot of like, every time I listened to opinions about Pac, it was always... It was always about he was a thug, he was this, he was that. He had so many different, you know, um, sides to him that people fell in love with. But all that aside, I started looking into Tupac because I wanted to understand him and relate him to my life in any way, shape or form I could, because I wanted to understand like, what was so fascinating about this man. And one thing that I fell in love with as him as a man, and yes, it's not, it's, there's no pause moment here. <laughs> but one thing I fell in love with him as a man was the relationship he had with God. And as far as like him believing that he's, what he's doing is right. And granted, like he may, might be wrong, but he's okay with saying, well, right now I feel that I'm right. And if I'm wrong in the future, I'm, I'm glad to say like, you know, that I was wrong, but right now I feel like that I am right. And I don't, you know, and I felt like that was how I was as a kid. There would be times where I questioned things 
and I felt strongly about certain things without even really me having an answer as to why, but I felt like it was right in my heart. With that being said, I had, from there on forward, I had a lot of other examples as far as why I decided to look more into Islam. Um, but I think like this is the biggest part right here. So 2014 was a really devastating year for me. Um, for one, in early, late 2013, my great grandma passed. And it was funny because around that time, I wanted to gain more knowledge as far as like the afterlife, God, and things like that. Because once again, I was just looking at looking at the Tupac at the, around the same time. And she passed away right before I can start asking questions and try to get close to her. And around that same time, my mother had lost her home because we had gotten kicked out as far as like where we were living and things of that nature. It's a long story. Maybe I can explain it in another video, but we got kicked out and I had nowhere to go. Uh, one thing I decided to do uh, because she recommended it was that I would go to trade school and decide to pursue that career or not career, but pursue that path. And I chose to go. Now, the thing was, I couldn't, I can't really disclose too many things about it because I was told I shouldn't. But the thing was, you couldn't go anywhere. You were pretty much stuck on this campus the entire time. And only time you could leave is if you went on trips. And the entire time I was there, I felt isolated. I felt isolated from family, friends. I felt like I had no life. I felt like my life was in the gutter. Everybody else is in the college living their best life, even though they're getting drunk and not really doing too much and missing exams. At least they're having fun. Meanwhile, I'm sitting here inside a place where people didn't even know how, like, didn't even know the basic alphabet, didn't know the how to count, how to multiply properly. Um, you know, just, you know, things that I personally thought was just like, man, come on, you know. But there was something inside of me that made me say, like, everything's going to get better. And I didn't know what it was, but it just did. And the thing was, I'm a big fan, a big, big fan of J. Cole. And uh, when around that time, that was when 2014 Forest Hills Drive dropped. And it felt like with that feeling and then this album dropping, if you know anything about the album, it was like a sign. It was like, and then especially in January 28th, when that hook came on, um, if you know the hook, um, you just know. But the hook was something that spoke to me so tremendously deeply and it made me just feel like this everything's gonna be good things are gonna get better things of that nature um so i decided to be you know just grow my relationship with god even more so that was like the biggest thing for me that kind of like spoke levels now some people might ask like what does this have to do with islam but the thing is like there's like different hints of it as time goes on I had a lot of Egyptian friends. I had a lot of friends that were Muslim. I had a couple of girls that I knew that were Muslim that I wanted to be with and date, but you know, obviously you can't. But um, there was also people that in the hip hop community that I was studying slightly that believed in it. There was also people that were, if they weren't that, then they were friends with people that were successful that were Muslim or they were um, in the realm of that, of what I learned, I was like, like trying to build my craft in, whether it be art, music, or anything. It was always somebody that was like a good professional in that, in being a Muslim. So from that point forward, there was just a lot of signs pointing to that, you know, pointing to God, pointing to Allah, whatever um, you want to say. Um, but as time progressed, I just had a lot of instances where I ran across people that were just in the faith and they were just really genuine, nice people, cool, all that stuff. And I don't know, it was just something that it was just like, bro, like, why does this always happen? Like, why am I always friends with another Muslim person? But, you know, I guess you could say like a more logical person or that has an argument can say, well, to an extent, a lot, there's a lot of different studies saying that Muslim, uh, Islam is one of the more, it's starting to uh grow more rapid than christianity is in around the world and maybe that's why but i mean it just felt like i don't know to me that didn't feel like that's what it was it felt like there was something else to it um maybe i was being more exposed i'm open to the idea but i feel like that's even more of a reason to say that this there's truth behind this religion the one of the things that kind of ended was the end all be all for me was i was going through this problem. It's a lot of different things. I could talk more about it in different videos. We'll see how this goes. But 
we'll speak about this in the next section. So I was going through a little phase where I was noticing in the dating realm that it's really hard to find somebody. And it's not like I don't want to find somebody. I know for, for example, I'm just going to be open and honest, right? So for a long time, I've always struggled with finances. I've never been the best. I never had someone around that really teach me about finances. I never, I had to like learn things and learn t tips and tricks on how to handle things. I currently live with my parents, um, but don't get it twisted. I pay for a lot of the things of my own. I understood that my mother wanted kids, uh, stepdad wants kids, grandma is getting older, uh, brothers are looking to me like, you, you know, cause I'm the eldest. Um, they're looking to me like, yo, it's about time for you to start settling down. Um, it, you don't have to settle down and have kids, but you can at least settle down and off the grip, but you can at least settle down and find somebody for you and build something with them and have kids in the future. And I've been looking into that in my heart personally. And I will say, I will say strongly before the age of 26, um, I didn't feel that way. I felt like it was kind of like a trap for people to have kids and especially in this day and age to have children and not be financially somewhat finance, at least financially responsible. <laughs> so I decided to say, well, you know what? Let me at least go out there. Let me see what's out there. And I, you know, I feel like in my heart, I'm a level headed person. I don't feel like I'm a, I, I mean, at times we're over here, I'm human. At times I get angry, at times I beat myself up, but I feel like I'm at least level headed to an extent where it's like, I don't, I don't feel like I argue a lot. I don't feel like I'm always like, you know, argumentative. I don't feel like I'm always lazy. I don't feel like I'm always balanced in some way. But when I was dating, man, it was hard. <laughs> it's really hard to find and meet somebody. And that the thing is for me is when I went on these dates, I would just feel really angry. Like I would feel like I was being used or I felt like my time was wasted. I got out of a situation for almost 11 years. If you want to hear about that story, we got a whole, I, go, I can make a whole video about that. But for right now, I'm just going to stick to this. But I was just kind of over dating. So I took a year off. And around that time, I remember I read a book when I first started a job in 2019. Um, and it was called, it was called um, No More Missing Nice Guy by Dr. Gro uh, Robert Glover. I can post a picture right here. Um, but essentially, um, it talked about like why, you know, the manosphere or like, you know, why men are the way they are and what we need to do to get out of that. I'm actually, I always try to reread it at least once a year. I still have the book in my closet. Um, but essentially I started looking, that kind of made me dive into the red pill, um, movement. And I ain't gonna lie. Like when I started realizing, oh, this is why women do what they do. Like, this is why I wasn't chosen. This is why she decides that, or why she thinks this is the the way, or you know, whatever it may be. And it was just a lot of different. I have, uh, to me, it was very shallow. It was a lot of different. <laughs> it was a lot of shallow uh, ideology as far as like why women choose the way they choose, and all. And hell, like just not women, but guys do what they do as far as like they pretend to be alpha. It was just like to me. I didn't really get that. And if you want to categorize me in that little manosphere, I guess you could say I'm a man of uh, the men that go their own way. But nonetheless, um, I started getting angry. I started feeling this anger within me. Like, so this is why. And so this is why she doesn't do this with me or she's not talking to me because I'm in this position and she wants me to be in this position. And I just felt like I was inadequate and not inadequate in the sense of like where I'm at. Because look, life is hard, man. We got to do what we got to do to get by. And it's not to say we can always improve and do better, but life is hard as shit. But anyway, I started feeling angry. And I remember like I tried to get out of that mindset of stop being angry, stop being angry, learn to meditate, learn to move away from that negative toxic stuff and just get back to who you are and understand that, look, this is just the world. The world is fucked up. Everything's not, everything's in a disarray, but that doesn't mean you have to be. So I remember I talked to this Muslim girl that I've been friends with pretty much my entire life. We always had like an on and off relationship, which is fine, but it was kind of like, not a relationship like dating, but like in a sense of being friends and just knowing each other. And there'll be times where she would just pop up randomly in my life and I'm just like, what in the world is going on? And this was kind of like the thing that kind of was the end all be all. But she was Muslim and um, 
she, we had a conversation because I was going out drinking for a little while. I could talk about that in a story if you like. But I was going out drinking a lot and I decided to take a break, but I wanted to still drink here and there. But um, we had a conversation about drinking and I remember she said, well, in our religion, we it's a sin to drink. And I was like, a sin to drink? Like, to me, I thought it was it was kind of a little absurd. But the more I thought about it, the more it makes sense. Um, the more you go around it, the more you get around people that have it, it's kind of like you're just kind of putting yourself in that mindset. Oh, I can have a drink. It's like, no, uh, I don't. You shouldn't be in that mindset. You should be in the mindset if it's doing something, I'm doing it for me. And I feel like, well, if drinking doesn't really help you in some sense, then I don't feel like you should be doing it. I was looking into Islam because of those conversations and I was, it was like barely any research. It was kind of like me just watching FTD facts videos. And I was just thinking I knew it all at that point. And I tried to converse with her about what I was thinking about and what it was about. And she was just kind of like, well, you, can you stop messaging me? I guess she's like, really, her family is very strict. But essentially, she was just like, can you stop messaging me? All these other things. And I was just like, well, wow, you're gonna, you're really going to get offended from me messaging you? Like, I'm not even with you in person, you know? Like, I'm just messaging you, trying to get and just have a conversation. And she decided to block me because she was upset. But she wasn't mad, but she I, I asked for forgiveness, you know. But she was just like, nah, I'm not mad. I just say, you were just making me uncomfortable. We don't really do this. So anyway, I decided to really go dive into it. But keep in mind, I was already diving in um, probably about months before that. But it wasn't like it was super dived in. It was kind of like just looking up facts here and there. But nonetheless, um, I decided to really dive in this last couple of months or a few months really and I've been watching um, Sheikh Uthman Farooq I've been watching some Mufti Mink videos I forgot the other guy's name he's an Indian guy but he has his own church I think um, or his mosque or I can't remember I don't know per se but like he answers questions and I watched that guy I watched um, reaction videos and there was a video that I watched um, by Uthman Farooq and it was pretty much just saying in the video that essentially well we just believe in one God and then Muhammad was just a messenger another messenger with the final messenger to say that we need to you know this is the word and this is what you need to do and you know for a long time there I guess you could say there has been a lot of misconceptions about the Middle East especially from the Western standpoint you're always it's always about terrorism it's about oppression it's always about like they mess with their aunts and uncles or whatever it was and it was just like silly nonsense but nonetheless I started really looking into it and I must say most of it aligns with what I just believe anyway so to end off this video um yeah, like pretty much Islam aligns with a lot of what I believe. I believe that Christ was a real person. Even after as a kid into about teenage years, early uh, early adulthood, like I started realizing like, well, there's not really any clear, like there's not a lot of clear proof that he did exist. However, a lot of people, I mean, come on, let's just put it, let's put logic in the fact here. It's like, where did, if this story, even if this was just a story, and they were told amongst people, you're telling me millions, about hundreds of thousands of millions of people from that time frame took this basic little story somebody in the desert said and took it to the heart like that, like to an extreme like that. I highly doubt that that was the case, you know? It was just, it's just something that's a connect here. But I believe, but with that being said, I, I mean, I really do believe that he was a person. I just don't believe that he was God in human form. I believe that he was connected to him in a sense because he was a prophet or he was just, you know, one of those people that was sent down to give the word. And I believe simply that that he essentially when he's when people always make this comparison about like I'm God or like he keeps making claims that I'm God. And some people say little G, big G. I don't even think about even in that kind of I don't even think about it in that way. What I think about is that he pretty much was just saying I am God in a sense of what he was preaching about like as far as like love is part of God like like God loves you he cares for you he's merciful and the more you love the more you start to see why love is such a powerful thing now the thing is with that is like I believe in that message now what I say I'm a follower of Christ per se not really 
I wore, you know, I used to wear rosaries. I'm not even Catholic, but I used to wear rosaries, necklaces, um, Christ, you know, Christ symbolization on it. And the reason why I wore it was because it reminded me, just, just to remind me of what he taught. Reminded me to love, be kind, generous, forgiving, things of that nature. Just for, you know, just what Christ taught. It wasn't to remember him per se. It was to remember what he taught. And if that's what God wants us to do, then I, all by means, I believe that we should do it. Christ is just to, rem just to help me remember that this is what this is about. And I guess you could say in that sense, I was a Christian, but more of just a follower of Christ in some way, shape or form, but barely even a follower. Say this is like the end all be all. What is the end all be all? Well, the end all be all for me was God. It was just like, well, if he sent these words down and he wants us to follow him, then I'll try my best of my ability as a human being to follow these things. And looking into what I looked into as far as the Quran, I looked into a little bit. I've only read a page, but I've read like certain surahs from videos and things of that nature from friends that post things. And also just and with the videos that I watch, they always quote them in Arabic, but they always go back and say them again. Just from what I hear, like not anything I've I opposed to as far as like what I've heard so far. And I've watched multiple videos, multiple clips, read uh, multiple different stories and like little Instagram posts, videos, whatever you may think. And every single time I look at them, I don't have any objections. And I think that's very important, very important to say because when I don't find, like personally, I know myself. And when I personally look at something and read something and don't have like a real uh, opinion or real objection to something, that means to me is speaking truth. At the end of the day, I wanted to conclude by saying that I will be taking my Shahada. Um, I don't know when or how, like, you know, I'm always in my mind as I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Virgo, I'm a perfectionist. You know, I don't take Virgo stuff seriously or horoscope seriously, but in the basic, to, to break, it, break it down just in basic terms, I'm a perfectionist. So sometimes I'll be thinking, I got to take a Shahada. I got to go to a, a mosque and bow down and say the Shahada. But I don't think that's necessary, but I just feel like I have to feel in my heart that I'm ready to say it. And, but I do want to, I do want to, and I want to learn. I've been trying my best to write down a plan this weekend. I'm going to definitely write down a plan. That's part of my goal this weekend. Also to read 25 pages of the Quran and then read 25 pages of the Bible. The reason why I'm doing that is for my great grandmother uh, passed away in 2013. She was like the last person that really was devout and she really read the, she didn't she studied the Bible in and out. She had like tags all over in it. And I, I couldn't, you know, I want to be on that level when it comes to this now. I want to be that devoted. So, so yeah, if you're watching this video and you decide to say, stop and leave a comment, thank you. Um, once again, I'm still new to all this stuff, to Islam and the way, you know, Muslim culture. But I hope to learn more and hopefully make be able to make some sort of change in the world. So thank you for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.